ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರಂ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತರಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಪಗತ ಮದಮಾನೈರತಿಮೋಪಾಯನಿಷ್ಠೈ ಅಧಿಗತ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥೈರಥಕಾಮಾನಪೇಕ್ಷೈ ನಿಖಿಲ ಜನ ಸುಹೃದ್ಭಿರ್ನಿರ್ಜಿತ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಲೋಭೈ ವರವರ ಮುನಿಭೃತ್ಯೈರಸ್ತು ಮೇ ನಿತ್ಯ ಯೋಗ study of the mamukshupadi <coughs> we were in the sutra number 17 shallam <coughs> kramamuliyachunnaram tan swarupam kedanilladu so i was mentioning <coughs> in the earlier class that even if there is some mistake or <coughs> incorrect pronunciation or it is not mentioned in the way it has to be mentioned it doesn't matter so there are two important aspects in this regard that is to be noted the first thing is the mental disposition one has towards the mantra and second is physically is he able to pronounce it properly these are the two most important aspects <clears throat> and third aspect is of course the physical posture etc which is in which he has to sit while do the doing the chanting so there are two important aspects in this also one thing is whenever he is he may be going around roaming around he may be walking he may be doing uh, taking the walk for physical fitness or he might be going to some place or he might be driving uh, in today's scenario or something so at that time <clears throat> of course he can continuously chant within his mind or the upamsha swara even or even adult that's not uh, that's not an issue but as per the <clears throat> anika after the sandhya vandana of course for those who are adhikaris <coughs> it is mentioned in the anikam as follows that he has to separately do some pranayama then he has to do the sankalpa then he has to do, do the anganyasa karanyasa etc and then chant it that is the formal way of doing it and informal way of course it is it is not defined as such <clears throat> so at that time the posture etc also matters how whether he should sit in the padmasana or sukhasana or what and how the counting has to be done because it is done like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 like that or you might have a tulasi mala or something like that the mala is there or uh, the lotus uh, beads mala of lotus beads so there are all uh, uh, aspects because 
the what we call as the sparsha or the uh, sense of touch that is obtained from the tulasi mala or uh, the lotus beads or tulasi beads is very much uh, conducive for a sattvika pravritti in a human being so that is why especially for the vaishnava marga as of now one very important aspect is <coughs> the vaishnavas especially sri vaishnavas they talk much or rather we talk much about the <coughs> the vishnu paramya and also about not worshiping what we call as devatantras devatantra means literal meaning of devatantra is anya de anya devata devatantaram that is any demigod other than vishnu he is what we call as devatantra so there is lot of uh, among the commentators and also among the scholars who expose these commentaries or uh, give their exposition on these commentaries there is lot of focus on uh, the um uh, the supremacy of lord narayana and his being superior to all other devatas and all other devatas are inferior of course as far as we are concerned it's a universal truth but many a times what happens people end up in uh, censuring other uh, other demigods like vishnu uh, i mean like uh, brahma shiva inda etc but uh, my acharya was of the opinion and it is quite uh, correct also it is very reasonable also that need not be done just because you actually are following you are supposed to path, follow the path of vishnu because any person who follows the path very diligently he will have at most though he may not follow it he will have respect for all other people that is the main criteria of a person who is really steeped in his religion or his philosophy or whatever it is so he will not he may not subscribe to the views mentioned there but he will not censure them or talk very lightly or talk badly about those things but there is a sort of a fundamentalistic attitude among all philosophers so it is a universal trend that now uh, when we talk about uh, the veera shaiva philosophy that is prevalent in karnataka out and out they start censuring the vaishnavites similarly vaishnavites out and out they start censuring and uh, speaking badly about other demigods that is not actually permitted so it is like there is a very beautiful uh, example given in the sampradaya granthas itself so it is as if a pativrata stri who is a woman who is totally chaste woman who is totally dedicated to her husband what is the disposition she has towards other other uh, males other human beings who are males other purushas para purushas so neither she despises them neither she respects or loves them so they are called as udasina you are indifferent towards them so a very chaste woman is there what does she see what does she do when she sees a man who is going on the street does she despise him or disrespect him no there is no reason to despise or disrespect the person who is going on the street similarly she does not know who is she, she does not also have any affection or love or in the respect towards him so he is indifferent towards him. it is called as audasinya rudasina bhava so what happens in all our philosophies today the trend has come where we start we have we start developing dvesha towards other other paths so even in our philosophy what we say even if they go to the shaiva path ultimately shiva will actually guide him to the vishnu path only so we are more advantageous we are at an advantage because 
we follow the direct path to moksha whereas they follow the follow an indirect path to moksha because you have several statements which says sarva deva namaskaraha keshavam pratigachha and that is reiterated ha huh? many times many many times in shri bhashan etc so ultimately sarva deva namaskaraha keshavam pratigachha what does it say even if even when you actually prostrate to a human being ultimately it is said that suppose i prostrate keshav das so i am actually prostrating to the antaryami or the supreme lord who is prevalent within the heart of keshav das so if somebody i prostrate to anybody else or if somebody else prostrate anybody prostrates to anybody ultimately it is the god who is actually the recipient of the prostration if i can put it that way. so when it is so there is a trend in all the philosophies whether it is islam or christianity or even our own indian philosophies or traditions or religions where we are made to actually despise and also censure other systems of philosophy other paths other demigods etc which a highly evolved spiritual person will not do so we have to be cautious in that aspect so my acharya used to stress on this and generally it is all uh, well accepted fact among all the people even the shri vishnu acharyas do not censure the other devatas they will say they are uh, they are not equal to vishnu which is which is a fact according to us but many a times what happens the there is a very fine line which is transgressed most of the times anyway <clears throat> so in the present context shunnam krama oriya chunnam tan swarupam keda nilla so even if there is a mistake or fallacy in the way the mantra is chanted there is no problem the fruits that are that are expected shall be attained by the chanter so there is no the swarupa hani will not occur that means there will be the mantra will not lose its efficacy just because it is not chanted properly on the other hand this is very important we should make all efforts to chant it in the correct manner only that doesn't mean we purposefully chant something or we are uh, not very uh, we are we don't concentrate on the mantra and uh, just uh, have a very uh, what sort of attitude that is the uh, indifferent attitude towards it that is not permissible on the other hand if beyond our control uh, we have a casual attitude that's the right word on the other hand if we have if there is a mistake or fallacy while we chant that is beyond our control beyond our knowledge then that is condoned by the supreme lord so that is why it is said sankethyam parihasyam va stopam helanam eva vaikuntha nam agrahanam ashesha akaharam vidu so even if you are telling it as a sanketa for something else sanketa means for example i'll give a very good example of course you may not be familiar with this example there is a work called chandra loka which actually deals with the figures of speech in sanskrit like uh, you have uh, the metaphor simile etc in in the english literature you have only about 10 to 15 or maximum 20 to 25 different figures of speech but in sanskrit literature which is a highly highly award literature compared to english literature from what i know and i have heard from the english scholars uh, scholars in english literature we have got 125 figures of speech so while explaining uh, a particular figure figure of speech called upreksha lankara <clears throat> which is uh, in a work called chandra loka which is authored by the great jayadeva incidentally was a great 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 devotee of krishna and who authored the gita govinda he mentions sambhavana asya rupreksha so sambhavana means actually proposing something 
So I will give a very uh, good example, which can uh, which anybody can understand. So suppose a building, a person is getting a building built, which has four or five floors. So a person who has a little envy or who wants to somehow or the other make fun of this person. Or oh, are you building a house that is going to touch the sky? The, way he, the friend of the person who is getting the building built will may ask. It's as if you are going to <clears throat> build so many floors that your house will ultimately touch the sky. Of course, nobody, <laughs> even the Burj Khalifa or something, in, I think they have some 210 floors or something like that. Nobody can build any house that, uh, that is touching the sky because this, there is no upper limit to that. So this is called as Sambhavana. But in Sanskrit language, as far as Aurohitya is concerned, which you are familiar with or when some event is con uh, conducted. So uh, an offering is given to the Purohits, which is known as Sambhavana. So this word is there, Sambhavana Asya Utpreksha. Utpreksha means exaggeration actually. So exaggeration is a type of figure of speech. So it is mentioned as Sambhavana Asya Utpreksha. But this Sambhavana Asya Utpreksha is known to people only who have already studied the Gita and the Chandra Loka. But generally what happens, people, Purohits are curious to know Suppose I go to a house to perform a ceremony, another person goes to another house to perform a ceremony. Then, uh, so they all meet, uh, meet each other. And then <clears throat> they want to know how much Dakshina the other person has got. But when they are in the presence of so many people, it is difficult. It is, it is not uh, appropriate to ask in, in front of other people. But on the other hand, they cannot uh, sustain their curiosity. So they say, how much is the Utpreksha? To mean how much is the Sambhavana is how much is the Dakshina that you got today. So one, one Purohit will ask another person, how much is the Utpreksha? Utpreksha, they will just ask, not even how much. What about the Utpreksha? He will say, fine. Oh, very good, he will say. So this is how two people will actually converse. So five means it might be 5,000 rupees depending upon the situation. Then his uh, curiosity is uh, done away with and then <laughs> they complete the conversation. So here Sambha, Utpreksha means Sambhavana which in turn means the money given as Takshina. So this is known as Sanketa in Sanskrit which means using a particular word in a totally different sense. So that is known as Sanketa in Sanskrit. So it might have a different connotation in English, in, in that particular language. But you actually use the word to denote something else totally. So <laughs> I don't know whether it's uh, right to give that example. In a very, very uh, derogatory sense, they say chikka or something. Chik means, uh, I think uh, it is a, a young uh, hen. But of course, chick means something <laughs> which is <laughs> used in the derogatory sense. Uh, which I think uh, people who are uh, well versed in slang and English language, they'll be able to understand. So chick actually means chicken, but it's used in a different sense. <clears throat> so that is known as sanket. So even if a person, he does not want to denote the word he does not want the word Narayana to denote the Supreme Lord. But he uses that in a different sense. That is known as Sanket. <clears throat> and then Parihasya. I am, why I am mentioning this is, many a times people will not be able to understand the deep meaning of these words. What is Sanketya? What is Parihasya? <clears throat> so, yes. So then Parihasya. Parihasya means <coughs> when you actually use the word in a derogatory sense. So I will give one another example. Once again, it should be understood that this example should be 
they are taken only with regard to this particular context, not in any derogatory sense. Actually, even quoting such an example is totally incorrect. So with that precaution, I am mentioning it. Suppose a person, a person is of very loose character. Then many a times what people do is, oh, he is uh, like, like Krishna, Lord Krishna, like that they say. Which means that he has, if a person has some illicit relationship, they say he is like Krishna. Which is totally, totally correct, incorrect. Because even in the Krishna Ashtotra, Shatnama, Ali Stotra, we say, Ana Shodasha Sri Sahasresha in Maha is there. And then you have Anadi Brahmachari name. And you have very beautiful uh, that shloka where uh, that uh, story about Nityopavasi and Nitya Brahmachari. Have you heard about that, uh, that story? No, that is a very interesting. Anyway, I will, I will narrate it in some other context. So Krishna was the 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 most revered Brahmachari. What Brahmachari means, etc. It's a huge topic. I am not going to. But Parihasya is where you actually use a sense in a derogatory term. So when that is why I said if a person has some illicit relationships, then people call him as, oh, he is great, he is an expert in Krishna Leela or something like that. To mention that he is of a very loose character, which is totally incorrect. But even in those cases, this Parihasya and then Stobham. Stobha means expressions which do not have any which are not having any particular meaning. Any particular uh, designated meaning. That is the right word. That means now if I say pen, this is the pen. So this is the object. Suppose in English you say, gosh, uh, oh my god. So in Sanskrit there is hanta, aho, bata, etc. So these are all words used as exclamatory words or exclamatory expressions, which do not have any particular meaning. But many a time since they may actually have so in a, a very common uh, usage. In South India, is they say Ayo Rama or Ayo Krishna, also some people say. It's like Westerners saying, Oh my God, or Jesus Christ, or something like that. So, this is Toba Akshara, where they actually don't mean, if they say Ayo Rama, what has happened? They don't mean to pronounce or uh, say the word Rama. It is more of an expression, exclamatory expression, which is called as Stobha. And Helena is totally, when you use it as a derogatory term, also. So, whether it is all these, any of these, Vaikuntana Amagrahana, Ashesha Adhaharam Viduhu. So, when you actually chant the name of Vishnu in one way or the other. So, that is why even in some versions of the story of Valmiki, it is said that the sages who came across Valmiki in his previous avatar when he was supposed to be a bandit. Actually, this story does not have any uh, textual evidence. It has been probably mentioned in some Purana. <clears throat> so there, he has this, the act of slighting, disregard, contempt, yes. So there, when the Rishis actually gave the Ramanama as the Upadesha. It is said that they asked him to chant the name Mara, 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 Mara. So when you say Mara, 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 it becomes automatically, it becomes Rama. So they did not even ask him to chant the Ramanama, but they asked him to chant the sound Mara, which ultimately culminated in Ramanama being chanted several times. So Vaikuntha, that is why Sankhya, Timpari, Asim, Stopam, Helanam, etc. So Vaikuntha Namakrahanam, Ashesha Akhaharam, Vidhu. So this 
So they opine that the, the name of Vaikuntha, that is Lord Vishnu, cleanses away all the sins. And once again, a shloka in a big, bigger meter. Etavatanam agadinna agadinaharena yakum sam Sankirtanam bhagavato unakarmanam nam Akrishya putram agavan yadajan loki Narayane timriyamana aiti muktim. Very beautiful shloka, very well composed, of course, like all the other shlokas in Bhagavatam. Eta avata adam magha nirehara So it is enough for the cleansing away of the sins of human beings. What is enough? Sankirtanam bhagavataha guna karma nama. So the <coughs> saying or the exposition or pronouncing the names, the divine pastimes and also divine qualities of the Supreme Lord. So, Akrishya Putram Maghavan Adajamilopi Putram Akrishya Narayane Priyamana Upaiti. So, Yadamilopakhyana is very famous. So, he actually called his son Narayana, but ultimately, in due course, we have to underline that. He attained moksha. <clears throat> so that is how the shallum krama moriyat chunnaam tansvarupam kena nilladi. And then, engre padiye shallinam shunnavare halak raksha kama heya hira tansvarupatil nadu nilladin gay. So that is what this seventeen sutra says. Then we come to the 18th Sutra. Idatan kulantarum in girapadi yella pek shitangalayum kudukum Aishwariya kaivalya bhagavalla bhangali ashek pattavar halakti avattai kudukum. So kulantarum, in case a person is desirous of attaining progeny, then he can actually do it chant the mantra for that purpose also. So one very important aspect is there is a concept that is well entre entrenched in Sri Vaishnavas, but 99% of the times it is not in practice. <laughs> we have to confess that also, that a Sri Vaishnava does not aspire for anything else other than the Lord Narayana. So <coughs> the Kamya karmas are to be totally avoided by Sri Vaishnavas. That is a concept that is mentioned in several works. But today, once again, what has happened? There is a huge transgression while mentioning this. That several people who, people who give discourses, they actually go to the extent of even mentioning that the Vihita karmas, like homas, etc., which are performed as part of the samskaras, they also have to be given up. And that one should never engage in Kamya Karma Sakar. Is, this is what they are telling in the lectures, but actually no, nobody is following it. Actually. But we are not leaving, uh, we are not censuring any person individually, but it is just being practiced in theory, being said in theory, but nobody is practicing. But here it proves that even the Ashtakshara Mahamantra can be chanted with certain worldly attainments in mind also. But that is within the framework of that. So if a person wants to attain Prajani, can he chant the <coughs> Ashtakshara Mahamantra or not? For that purpose. Not with the purpose of moksha. Definitely he can chant. That is why Thirumangai Advar has said, Kulandaram, Shalvam, Tandaram, etc. Which is, so we don't need an authority more than Thirumangai Advar, and which is, which the same thing has been narrated again by Pilladokacharya, which is once again reiterated by Manavaramana. 
So he says, Kulam Tarum Shelvam Tandidum. It even gives material prosperity. It gives progeny, it gives everything. So that is why Pudlaloka Acharya says, Yella Apek Shipangalayam Kudukkum. It will bestow all the things that a person wishes for. Then all the things means what? Aishwarya, Kaivalya, Bhagavalla, Pangalai, Ashipattava, Kavati, Kudukkum. So if a person wants to have material prosperity, if he wants to attain Kaivalya, or if he wants to attain the Supreme Lord, that is Moksha. All these things are bestowed by the chanting of the Ashtakshara Mahamantra. So that is well commented upon by Manavana Mahavani. He says, Ini idi idin sarva apekshita pradatva mahira vai bhavattai arudichai hira. So he says, the greatness of the Ashtakshara Mahamantra is it can bestow all the expected fruits to the person who chants this. Ada iditan yendritodangi, ada vade mantrantan, kulandanum yendritodangi, alvar held a rudiche the padie, adhikara nugunaman apex tangre, yellam kodukum in gay. So, based on the person's fitness, that is very important. It provides all the fruits that he expects or he wants to attain. But that is why there is a very important word, Adhikara Anugunama. Within the framework of the rules of creation that we have to underline. So suppose I want to become a youth of 16 years. <laughs> Will it happen? Or suppose now itself I want to become a person of 70 years. Will it happen? It will not happen. Because that is against the laws of this creation or of the world. So within the framework of dharma, within the framework of the laws of nature, everything that one aspires for by chanting the Ashtakshara Mahamantra is key. That is the most important thing to be underlined. So within the framework of the laws of nature, this is very important. And then what all, what all can a person get? Attai vishadi kari kira. So that is being explained in detail. Adavade aihika laukika ma laukika. Aiha laukika ma ishwariyam svargadhyam para laukikam. Kaivalyam Bhagavantancha Mantroyam Sadaishyati Engirapadiye Aihikamayam Paradoti Kamayam Irikum Maishwariyatayam Atma Prapti Rupamana Kaivalyatayam Paramapurushar Tamana Bhagavalla Vatayam Ashepata Dikari Hedati Japahoma Nihadare Swayam Sadhana Mainundi Avava Purushar Tangalai Kodukum in Gay very beautifully, very succinctly he has summarized. So, there are Aishwarya is of two types. Aihika Aishwarya and Paradaukika Aishwarya. So, for example, Aihika Aishwarya is he wants a lot of property, a own lot of property, earn a lot of money, earn a lot of fame, name, become very famous, etc., etc. That will be bestowed upon him by chanting the mantra. Not only chanting, he may even perform homa using the Ashtakshara Mahamantra. So, Japa Homa Adi Hadade. So, he may, and a person might want to attain Swarga or the heaven, which is different from Moksha, wherein he wants to stay for a considerable amount of time. That will be provided. Or if he wants to attain certain other lokas, certain other, it is translated by some people as planets. So this is a very complicated issue, but I will not go into the detail now. So if he wants to, for example, he might want to have a place in the Indra Loka or some other Loka for that matter, or even something like Dhruva Loka, if 
there, is, there exists such a loka. But we, we, are, we are familiar with the words like Indra Loka, etc. If that is expected by the person, then that is known as Paradokika Aishwarya, that is the Aishwarya or prosperity that is attained after leaving the body. So if he wants to attain prosperity in this birth itself, that also he can do. If he wants to attain prosperity, now I will, it is like the <coughs> Aesop fable of the uh, ant and the grasshopper or something like that. So now when I am having this body and I am having the, all the, all my faculties are intact, I will not aspire for anything material in this world. But I want, after I leave my body, I want to attain uh, happiness. So I will, I want to have particular Padavi like Indra Padavi or some so many, we call them as Adhikarika Purushas, Indra, Vishnu, I mean Indra, Shiva and Brahma, etc. So if I want, or the Vayu Padavi or Agni Padavi, these are the different uh, official positions as far as nature is concerned, according to the Indian tradition. So, for example, in the Madhva Sampradaya, there is a saint called uh, Vadiraja. So, they say in the next uh, Manmantara, he is going to be the Vayu Deva. So, he is going to adorn the position of Vayu. So, that is their belief and that is uh, Bhavishya, that, that is how they have uh, proclaimed the position that Vadiraja, the saint Vadiraja is supposed to get. So if a person is desirous of attaining such positions, those will be attained. Then Kaivalya and Bhagavala. This is a very, very complicated concept once again. So what is Kaivalya according to Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya? <coughs> yes. So according to Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, there is a position where a person who attains Kaivalya will enjoy the bliss of his own soul or self or Jivatma and not the Paramatma. And there is there are instances or uh, sayings that say that this Kaivalya is a position that is different from Vaikuntha. But it is also a very happy state of bliss only, and it is permanent. So that person will be situated somewhere outside Vaikuntha, and he enjoys the bliss of the Jivatma only, not the bliss of the Paramatma. Because as per the <coughs> Vedic passages, which we all accept in total, it says so Oshnuti Bram Havida Atno Tiparam Kanesha Bhyukta etc. So Oshnute Sarvam Sakama Saha Brahmana Vipashtite Ti. So the person who has attained the knowledge of the Brahman will attain the same amount of bliss that the Brahman possesses. And he will Enjoy that bliss along with the Supreme God only. So it is called as Bhoktri Bhogya Sahitya in Sanskrit, in the philosophy of Ishtar. Saha Ashtute Sarvan Kamane Saha Brahmana Vipashtita. He attains all possible, he attains the fulfillment of all possible desires along with the Supreme God. So it's like, suppose you are going on a jolly ride. A person wants to go on a jolly ride. So, <clears throat> he will enjoy it more if his wife and children are all together. So enjoying together, enjoying a bliss together, gives more satisfaction. Suppose a wonderful Shakar Pungal is prepared and offered to the Lord. So when it is partaken by all the devotees sitting together, though the <laughs> experience of uh, tasting the prasadam actually occurs in the brain of that person only, I cannot enjoy the 
happiness that you enjoy and you cannot enjoy the happiness that I am experiencing. But <clears throat> when it is enjoyed together by many people, then it becomes more enjoyed. So that is why when they say when happiness is distributed with others, it becomes more. When misery is distributed with others, it becomes less. So when you actually confide, confide in confide about your misery along with another person, misery is reduced. So when you share misery, it reduces. When you share happiness, it increases. That is what they say. Therefore, Soshnute Sarvan Kaman Sahabrahmana Vipashtita. So he, he comes to enjoy the bliss of the fulfillment of all desires along with the Brahma. So the, it is said the same amount of bliss that is enjoyed by the Brahman will be experienced by the Jivatma also and they together enjoy the bliss, which makes it all the more enjoyable. But as far as this Kaivalya person is concerned, it is said and believed that <coughs> specifically he actually enjoys the bliss of his own self in confinement. That is very important. And they say that it is permanent. But why a person will aspire for Kaivalya, etc. is a different question. When he can aspire for moksha. But actually, as far as my knowledge is concerned, there are no specific, specific instances where it is mentioned like this in the Vedas or any particular place apart from the Sampradaya works. Because as far as Sanskrit language is concerned, Mukti Kaivalya Nirvana Shreyo Nishreya Samatam Mukti Kaivalya Nirvana Nishreya etc. are all treated as Pariyayas or synonyms. And in several of the Shastra treatises of Nyaya Shastra, Sankhya etc. Kaivalya and Moksha are actually treated as total synonyms. They don't differentiate. But here, once again, and lot of uh, internal squabbles between what Kaivalya is and whether Kaivalya, Kaivalya Nishta is different from Moksha Nishta, etc. And my Acharya used to, he would not uh, entertain this uh, discussion because we are totally in the dark about these things. And based on, purely based on some uh, sayings of some Acharyas, we start quarreling with it. So he used to say that it is not correct because we are totally in the dark about both of these issues. So there is no use quarreling or even uh, making it an issue of uh, the Stenacharya and Vedanta Sampradaya etc. And he, when, when we, we know so less about the actual uh, fact, how much ever you quarrel, it doesn't make any sense because ultimately it leads you to nowhere. Not only does not lead you to nowhere, it also results in so much of animosity between people, which is totally incorrect. But here it is mentioned that Kaivalya is different from Moksha and even Ramanjacharya comments, for example, when he comments on the four different bhaktas, artho, jignyasu, artha, arthi, jnani, jabaratashabha. He says, jignyasu is kaivalya arthi and jnani is moksha arthi. So even he makes that differentiation. But how, what, etc., there is not very, very clear in the indication in the Punishat Sarvedas as far as you Anyway, but we don't disrespect any sayings of the Purvacharyas. But it is better not to have any differences of opinion based on some words only when we know so less about this, this uh, entire uh, issue. So that much is what my Acharya told us. It should be acceptable to one and all. <clears throat> so, Aishwarya Kaivalya Bhagavalla Bhangalikki Ashipatta Varhalikki Avatthai Kudukkum and then, of course, so Aishwarya we have been dealt with, Kaivalya we have dealt with. Bhagavan Lama is moksha. 
that is attainment of the supreme lord himself so for a person who is desirous of attaining moksha of course so that is why nishtayasam that is why called as nishtayasa in this context also in the shloka also nishreyasa means nitaram shreya nishreyasa the best benefit that one can attain irrespective of the persons <laughs> age sex caste creed etc the best thing that can happen to a person in this world is he attains moksha because that is the ultimate aim of all the human beings that is the ultimate aim of creation and that is the ultimate aim of the supreme lord also in having this creation so aishwarya kaivalya bhagavallabham galai aashaypattavar halakka avatte kodukkum then the core question arises in the bhagavad gita we talk about different paths like karma yoga jnana yoga and bhakti yoga so what about the utility of the ashtakshara mahamantra for those who are engaged in karma jnana karma yoga or bhakti yoga or jnana yoga or bhakti yoga. so swami pradyodaka acharya says in the 20th sutra karma jnana bhakti halile inindavar halak virodhiye pokki avatte kalakatti kodukkum so we are shri vaishnavas are supposed to be doing prapatti yoga it is mentioned as sarva dharmam parikyajya mam ekam sharanam vraja where he says give up karma yoga jnana yoga and bhakti yoga and do sharanam <coughs> that means <coughs> if you are unable to do karma yoga or jnana yoga or bhakti yoga don't worry do sharanagati that doesn't but many people once again uh, interpret it in the in a way that karma yoga is against shri vaishnava philosophy or against the bhakti philosophy or something like that it is not so. definitely <coughs> that is why when we come to the concept of jnana karma samuchaya vada a very very important concept are you familiar with this concept of jnana karma samuchaya vada what is known as jnana karma samuchaya vada in vedanta in vedanta philosophy are you familiar with it no i don't think so the idea the idea that bhakti yoga contains has to contain also karma and jnana ah no there is there is a specific uh, topic of how whether uh, <coughs> how the association of karma and jnana karma and bhakti etc happens it is known as jnana karma samuchaya vada and it is a very important topic as far as vedanta literature is concerned because the there is the dvaita school of philosophy advaita school of philosophy then yadava school of philosophy and also our own vishishta advaita school so i'll explain it some other it's a it's a big a uh, very deep concept so we will not deal with it now so anyway one thing we are sure is in the bhagavad gita we talk about the three yogas karma yoga jnana yoga and bhakti yoga so karma jnana bhakti alile indavar halakke so those who are deeply engaged in the either in karma yoga or jnana yoga or bhakti yoga the ashtakshara mahamantra what will it do விரோதியை போக்கி அவத்தை தலை கட்டி கொடுக்கும் இட் வில் ரிட் தி அப்ஸ்டக்கல்ஸ் தட் ஆர் தி இம்பெடிமெண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி பர்சன் அட்டைனிங் தி ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் ஆஸ் ஃபார் ஆஸ் கர்ம யோகா ஜான யோகா அண்ட் பக்தி யோகா ஆர் கன்சர்ன் அண்ட் தென் இட் வில் என்ஷூர் தட் தி ஃப்ரூட்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி ரிசல்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் கர்ம யோகா அண்ட் ஜான யோகா அண்ட் பக்தி யோகா ஆர் அட்டைன் பை தி அஸ்பைரன் or the devotee so <clears throat> any 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 path you take to moksha a person takes to moksha that is karma yoga or jnana yoga or bhakti yoga or prapatti yoga which he is going to talk about in next sutra 
or worldly <coughs> attainments like name fame etc or other worldly attainments like attaining different positions of vayu agni indra etc ashtakshara mahamantra is useful in all these instances so in a way we can say in a very modern parlance it's the be all and end all you can say put it like that. and this is commented upon by manavar damani idi karma adyupaya sahakari tvarupamana idin vai bhavattai arulichai hira so it cooperates it becomes a subsidiary of karma yoga gnana yoga and bhakti yoga and any all the yogas adavade karma yogatil lindavar halakke japa homari halade tannai sahaya vahak kollum alavil கர்மயோக விரோதிய கர்மயோகார்ந்த விரோதியான பாபத்தை போக்கி அந்த கர்மத்தினுடைய அவிச்சேதா பாதகமாய் கொண்டு அத்தை தலை கட்டி கொடுக்கும் பிரதமத்திலே ஜான யோகத்திலே இழிந்தவர்களுக்கு தன்னை சகாயமாக கொள்ளும் அளவிலே கர்ம சாத்தியமான ஜானாரம்ப விரோதி பாப நிவத்தியை பண்ணி அந்த ஜானத்தை நாடோரும் அதிசயத்தை பண்ணாது என்று கொண்டு அத்தை தலை கட்டி கொடுக்கும் பக்தி யோகத்திலே இழிந்தவர்களுக்கு தன்னை சகாயகமாய் கொள்ளும் அளவிலே அளவில் பக்தி யோகாரம்ப விரோதியான பாபத்தை போக்கி பக்தி விவருத்தி ஹேதுவாய் கொண்டு அத்தை தலை கட்டி கொடுக்கும் சோ வெரி பியூட்டிஃபுல்லி ஹி மனோனி எக்ஸ்பிளைன்ஸ் ஹவு தி அஷ்டாட்சர மகாமந்திர cooperates acts as a subsidiary in <clears throat> doing away with the obstacles of karma yoga and also helping in attain the fruits of karma yoga. same with regard to gnana yoga and bhakti yoga individually he explains this but for those who are not familiar with the exact nature of what karma yoga is precise nature of what gnana yoga is precise nature of what bhakti yoga is it is very important to know that <clears throat> so <clears throat> for this we have to that i will explain and conclude today's class and then we can <clears throat> come back next class and see how the ashtakshara mahamantra is useful in uh, for the persons proceeding in the path of karma gnana and so there is a beautiful beautiful work called geeta artha sangraha authored by yamuna acharya who was the <coughs> pracharya that is acharya sacharya is known as pracharya of ramanuja acharya so ramanuja acharya's immediate preceding acharya was periyanambi or mahapurna as he was known who was the disciple of yamuna acharya but according to history periyanambi or mahapurna never identified himself as ramanuja sacharya as per the norms prescribed in shri vachana bhushana this is this is a very important aspect that is to be noted the acharya who is initiating a shishya or disciple should never feel that i am the acharya he should actually have the mindset that he is the representative of his acharya and initiating the shishya so he should feel whole heartedly feel that he is an representative of his own acharya and he should treat his disciple as his satirthya or classmate co disciple therefore in all places ramanuja acharya <coughs> performs the mangala shloka in the mangala shloka ramanuja acharya quotes the name of yamuna acharya only no where he has quoted the name of mahapurna or periyanambi who actually did the initiation but doesn't ramanuja acharya know that he should have actually <coughs> taken the name of periyanambi or mahapurna and did it no it's not like that 
it is understood that Perian MB extracted a promise from Ramananda Acharya that he will never quote his own name as his Acharya, but he will quote Yamuna Acharya's name. That is why everywhere yet padam bhoru hadhyana vidhasta jeshakan mashaha vastuta mupayato ham yamune yam namamitam. He quotes in Gita Bhashya. In Vedarta Sangraha, he says, Tamoyena pastam sahi vijayate yamuna munihi. Everywhere he quotes the name of Yamuna Acharya only as his Acharya. And while writing the Gita Bhashya, he specifically states that Yamuna Acharya has written a wonderful, wonderful treatise called Gita Artha Sangra. So, where which has just 32 Anushtup verses, where the entire purport of Gita is explained in a very, very, very systematic way. So it says, Swadharma Magnana Vairagya Sadhya Bhakti Kagocharaha Narayana Param Brahma Gita Shastri Samiritaha. So he beautifully summarizes the Gita in just 32 shlokas, where first he says, What is the purport of the Gita? Then he says, What is mentioned in the first six chapters? There are 18 chapters are <coughs> divided into three parts of six chapters each. Jnana karma atmike nishthe yoga rakshya su samskrite atmanu bhoti siddhyarthe purva shatke na chodite madhyame bhagavat tattva yatha pyavati siddhaye jnana karma pinirvartya bhakti yoga sprakirtitaha and then he comes to explain the, first he explains the purport of the three, three, each shatka, three shatkas, that is groups of six chapters. Then he explains the purport of each chapter in one particular shloka. <clears throat> and then he summarizes the entire Gita in a very, very beautiful manner. So it is worth learning, memorizing the entire 32 shlokas. It is such a small work actually. There he says, he gives the precise explanation of these three. Where he says, Karma Yoga Tapas Tirtha Dana Yajna Adi Sevanam. What is Karma Yoga? It is Tapas Penance, <coughs> Deep Concentration. Tirtha Dana Yajna Adi Sevanam. Tirtha is going on pilgrimages. Dana engage in charity. Then yajna is the Panchabaha yajnas, which are enumerated. If you want details, I can give, but that, that itself is a big topic. If you are familiar, then fine. Otherwise, I will explain it in some other context. Then Jnana Yoga Jita Svantaihi Parishuddhatman is What is Jnana Yoga? Having achieved total control over the mind, and the sense organs. He experiences the pure bliss of the Paramatma. And Bhakti Yoga Paraikantya Pritya Dhyana Adhishtiti. Bhakti Yoga is having total, focused, undivided love or devotion towards the Supreme Lord. And by that, he actually engages in dhyana or meditation. Because many people say dhyana is not the aim of us who are engaged in bhakti yoga. It is totally wrong. Bhakti yoga itself is yoga. It is the yoga of samadhi and dhyana, etc. as mentioned by Patanjali, which is totally misinterpreted by all the Sri Vaishnava discourse givers nowadays. <clears throat> With due respect to everybody. So he says, Bhakti Yoga Parai Kantya Pritya Dhyana Adhishtiti. And even in the, and we have enough evidences uh, in Yamuna Acharya and also Ramananda Acharya's works that the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali, etc., is applicable to Vishishta Advaita or the Bhakti Marga only rather than Advaita. 
and today the advaitins have appropriated the yoga sutra and we have also given we are also totally under the um, incorrect impression that we have got nothing to do with yoga which is totally incorrect so bhakti yoga paraikantya pritya dhyana adhisthi so un, unflinching meditation unflinching concentration as part of dhyana or meditation out of unalloyed love that is unconditional love for the supreme lord or devotion is known as bhakti yoga that is why even in the shandilya bhakti sutra bhakti is defined as follows satvasmin parama prema roopa parama prema towards the supreme lord is known as bhakti and even ramanuja acharya says mahaniya vishaye preeti hi bhakti having love for the great elderly persons great persons god etc is known as bhakti mahaniya means worship who are adorable or worship to be worship so the love that we have towards persons who are elder to us who are worshipable to us is known as bhakti i think more than that, or nothing less than that also. so how <clears throat> this is the specific precise explanation of karma yoga gyana yoga and bhakti yoga and how the ashtakshara mahamantra is helpful in warding off all the impediments for these three yogas with regard to those who are really engaged in these yogas that is to be underlined and how the fruits are attained by the association of the ashtakshara mahamantra is explained beautifully which will <coughs> see in the next class so with these words i conclude today's lecture thank you very much swami so um in the beginning you mentioned uh, mental disposition correct pronunciation and physical posture uh but basically two mental disposition and correct pronunciation so is it possible that uh, are, are you going to explain that in detail at some point or should we uh, is it possible yes, to have I'll, a se- I'll explain a separate that, I'll, explain that, I'll explain that separately yes. okay separately okay and then uh, you mentioned this is also meant, given in the anikam uh and what particular anikam are you following because we know there are several anikams and uh, actually there is a, there is a work called the panchakala prakasha yes which is authored by it is actually it's not an authoring it is a compendium so panchakala prakasha deals with the the anika well, not, that is compendium of all the main anikas not panchakala uh, not panchakala kriya deepa sorry panchakala kriya deepa no i am not uh, yeah. you have that work with you uh i think so yeah maybe so can you share a soft copy with me? sure of course it is in which language uh it should be in sanskrit okay panchakala prakashika uh, maybe but you're saying panchakala prakashika yes yes, yes. okay it is a, it is actually printed in telugu script i have a copy but it is quite old it's printed nearly 80 to 90 years ago and we see that it was so popular among the shri vaishnavas in those days that uh, it uh, one edition was sold out within a matter of few months and they printed a second edition and that's what we understand from the introduction so right from the way the method in which a person has to rise from bed and with regard to personal hygiene and all those things how to do sandhya namam and vaishya deva and agni yotra samita dana and bhagavad aradhana then food food is very important chapter in the panchakala prakasha so which are the jati dushta which are the ashray dushta then how what is purity of food all those things are explained very very beautiful details and much of it is uh, <coughs> you we may say that uh, some things are not relevant today because nobody is performing <laughs> if actually a person performs uh, everything according to that his entire day is taken in that room <laughs> so it, it is a procedure of 6 to 7 hours in the morning and 3 to 4 hours in the evening 
so it's uh, he cannot have a job or a profession or something like that but nearly even until the last 100 years so the shri vaishnavas or uh, brahmin shri vaishnavas they would not <coughs> venture out of the house in the sense they were not engaged in any employment or anything like that so historically this is a very historical study is very much necessary and uh, having the view how it was until the last 100 years you have to see because the, in the agraharas the shri vaishnavas or brahmins they used to get uh, the basic necessities like uh, rice and uh, other corn etc and also they lived a very frugal life <coughs> just uh, four or five sets of dhotis <coughs> other than that other than what they required for their anushthanams they did not possess anything at all <laughs> so the women folk used to have some <coughs> jewelry etc but as far as men were concerned most of them were engaged in their anushthanams so it was it was relevant and it was practiced until the last about 100 years say until 19 even until 1920s and 30s and even until 1980s by a very very small uh, number of people uh, in the agraram some people were there but now i don't think there are more than two uh, there may not be even anybody the, their tribe might be extinct so in the panchakala prakasha all those things are mentioned so you were also mentioning about uh, upamamsu it's chanting of japa japam Up- upamamsu is is well, allowed um, Pamsu, that is the three ways Pamsu. that I have already mentioned. Uchchay he means in a way that you know, even others can hear. Yeah, vacha. Yes. Uh, so allowed chanting it allowed is uchchay. Upamsu is where only the lip movement is noticed, and only the person chanting can hear. Whereas manasa japa is totally mental. You do it at the mental level only. Even the chanting or the lip movement etc. is not seen. Upamsu is where the lip movement is observed. But well, upamsu is, is, is it, it, upamsu of a structure is okay at any time. All the three are okay. I see. Even uchchay he is okay. Hello. This all the three are hello. But it is said manasa is the best. And then you you mentioned about uh, nalinakshamala using using the nalinakshamala for japam. Yeah, nalina nalina mala and akshamala. So <clears throat> that is uh, because it uh, sometimes what happens when we count on our hands, uh, we may lose. Uh, uh, if uh, we get, become engrossed in the mantra, or if we start uh, when our mind goes elsewhere, many times I have experienced the uh, mind goes elsewhere, and uh, while doing like this, uh, the count may be lost. So uh, of course uh, now <laughs> yeah, gadgets where you keep pressing and the number is seen. <laughs> But uh, that was not the case in earlier days. So they used to have the japa, japa sara, japa me, japa mala, uh, like uh, the Iskand people have. So there you get the specific count properly. And at the same time, the <coughs> tulsi mala, the sparsha of the tulsi mala is very much. Uh, it is uh, conducive for a person to engage in that. And uh, yeah, I was wondering about the lotus seed, the nalina. The nalina. Nali Naksha, is it, is it uh, significant for Sri Vaishnavas? Because yes, yes, Ye Khanta Lagna, Tulasi Nali Naksha Mala. Ye Khanta Lagna. Tulasi Mala is also very uh, nice, very good. Uh, Kamala, Kamala beads are also very nice. That we get when, when the fruit becomes, uh, the flower uh, dries up. Uh, you have a sort of thing and in that you have, it forms very beautiful uh, crystals form in the uh, Lotus. I don't know whether you have seen it or not. No, no. I have. I have done an Akshamala. I have. I have. I have. Done. But have you seen how it forms in the lotus? Uh, no, not necessarily. Hey, when you when you come across uh, in India, when you come across uh, the lotus ponds, you can see very beautiful. Hmm. So they have to be pierced, and uh, many times it is actually uh, strewn together in silver or gold. Even some people do it in gold also. That is also fine. Even gold, as uh, it actually, it is very conducive for a person, depending upon his nature. Gold, silver, all these things. 
not from the point of view of their commercial value, but from the point of view of their spiritual value. So uh, you were mentioning also about uh, some Sri Vaishnavas there saying that uh, even even the, the performance of samskaras should be given up. Some people interpret it in that way, but it is the, it is not correct actually. Because when say say sarvadharman parityajya, they say karmanam swarupa That is, they have to be given up altogether. It is not correct because. Even the Manavana Mahavani and other uh, Acharyas, they say, Phalataha Tyaga, you should never give up the karmas. According to Vishishta Advaita philosophy, especially Ramanuja Acharya, he says, you should never give up the karmas. <laughs> that is why Ramanuja Acharya, when he was, even on the day, when he was about to attain Paramapadam, he was so old and weak that he could not do Arghya Pradhana. So he called his disciples and he asked them to help him bring the hands together and then he did Arjya Pradhana and perform Sandhya Anla and then only he proceeded to the Divine Abode. That's what we understand. And, and the perform... And what happens, uh, people get carried away while interpreting. So they say, they give a little bit uh, incorrect expositions of these things. Right, it, they, they speak, they, hyper, they use hyperbole to emphasize something. Yes, so, yes. Okay, there's some scars. Even today, I, even today, I heard a lecture of a scholar who said uh, Agni, Swaha, Soma, Swaha, etc. comes in the Homa. So even that has to be given up, which is not correct. Because even Ramanuja Acharya has not said like that. So, of course, all the, all the demigods are the manifestation of the Supreme Lord. When you have, when you have that thing, how can you give up? Right. Even, even Sandhya Andhram is the worship of when you say Gayatri Savita Devata, but not Surya individually because they are Sada Savitri Mandala Madhyavarti Narayana. Ultimately, it is Narayana who is in Savitri Mandala. That is why people call Ravi Narayan or Surya Narayan, they name themselves in South India, especially. Even in North India. So, uh, Surya is once again the manifestation of Lord Narayana. So if somebody says, if you are doing Sanjaya, Vaishnava, it should not do Sanjaya. That is totally against our teaching. But uh, that is why I said in their, uh, uh, what, uh, intention or uh, with the aim of uh, glorifying uh, the greatness of Vishnu, many a times they actually end up doing the opposite. Right. I mean, in the opposite of our Sampradaya or of, uh, of our philosophy. So, of course, though, there are different ways of doing the, the samskaras according to different sutras. But also, the, but also the, I think, Satyata Sri Vaishnavas are doing on, in, in Tamil only. They're doing the samskaras in Tamil. That is not that in is, Sanskrit. No, that, is, that is not permissible, actually. If they, are, if they are Brahmins, it's not permissible. Right. So, so I know in Tamil Nadu, sometimes they, uh, the government has a, a rule that you can ask for Archana to be done in Tamil in the, in the temple. That is, that, that is uh, because of some political overtones. Right. They said instead of Namaha, you say poetry, poetry, etc. Right. So there, uh, the Brahma, there is a movement, uh, that is a big issue, I just mentioned it to Oma. So there was a Brahmin, uh, anti-Brahmin movement in Tamil Nadu. That is once again due to so many political, social, uh, uh, social issues and political issues. So they said uh, they should avoid, they want, even now that is the, uh, that is the principle of the prevailing governments in Tamil Nadu for the last 50 years. So they, they are against Sanskrit and also Hindi also. So they said anything Sanskrit is uh, to be despised, but even in Tamil, 50% of the words are, are from Sanskrit origin only. Which they don't realize it. Anyway, that's a different thing. But that is due to some political overtones. Otherwise, it's not done. Right. Even uh, one, uh, one scholar uh, pointed out, even in Tamil Nadu, they say, uh, Even uh, the, the Tamilians say like that. They will not say, Neer kudu, neer de, neer kudu, shor kudu. They will not say. Shor means <laughs> uh, rice. But they will not, even Tamilians, who don't know Sanskrit, they will also say prasadam, give prasadam, not uh, sure or something. So, um, that, just is, to... that is, see, Indians, 
in Indian culture, Sanskrit is embedded. You cannot remove it because it is it is Sanskrit. So it is said Bharata se pratishte de samskritam samskriti stafa. So Sanskrit cannot be there without Sanskriti. Sanskriti cannot be there without Sanskrit. They are intertwined with each other. Right. So you were you were also mentioning about this about the difference between Sayuja and Kaivalya and different forms of moksha. And uh, I think it's a big topic. I uh, we would like to hear about uh, all the different types of moksha and uh, at some other time. I think it's a, yes, like you said. So I won't I won't question you more about that. But uh, can you just again reiterate the the point that uh, the bliss of Kaivalya is equal to the bliss of other types of moksha? No, oh, they say it's not equal. They say it's not. Once again, that is why I said there is no total, there is no specific Vedic injunction or anything that says this is what is Kaivalya exactly and this is what is Moksha, what is the difference, etc. Except for the Acharya statements, which once again we are unable to understand fully. So we will we will discuss about that. In a but, uh, okay, okay. But you 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 made a quote from Shastra. You made a quote from the Veda. What that what where was that quote from? Which, where, which one? You you made a quote from an Upanishad with Swaram uh, about about the nature of of moksha, the about nature of bliss. That is in Taitri Upanishad. That's from Taitri Upanishad. Okay, I'll look Taitri it up. Upanishad. Okay, Upanishad. like that. And I, I wanted, I wanted to reiterate to everybody also that there's a program of Manavala Mahamunigal's 650th anniversary coming up in the next few days. You are going to participate and uh, I will share with everybody the invitation for that. Uh, I think uh, before you go, um, uh, Ramakrishna has, a, uh, has also a question. So, yes. Swami, if you want to ask your question, please. Yeah. Uh, what I understood from uh, Bhagavad Gita is like uh, one has to go through his uh, sins or punya or papa. So he has to complete that before he attains the moksha. That's what I understood. Is that correct? The no, Bhagavad Gita correct. says like if you are committed some sins or punya, the entire, no. in your births you have to clear all that before no, you no, attain no. moksha. This is, this is a big topic, but <clears throat> the... Brahma Sutra specifically say Taradigame Uttara Purva Deoho Ashlesha Vinasho. So karmas are divided into three <coughs> Sanchita, Prarabdha, and Agami. Sanchita means that you have accumulated over the past seven births. And then Prarabdha is the karmas that are dictating the happenings or events in your present life. And Agami is that you are going to acquire in future. So once you have the vision of the Supreme Lord, you attain Bhagavad Sakshat Kara, the Sanchita Karmas or the accumulated karmas will, will be <coughs> done away with, that is, they will be destroyed. So that is an example, his analogy is given wherein when you put some cotton into a burning fire, immediately it becomes, it is reduced to ashes. Even Andal says in the Tripaviti Nil so Sanchita Karmas are accumulated Karmas will actually <coughs> be destroyed. Agami Karmas will not affect you. They will become important to affect you. Only Prarabdha Karmas have to be done away with by undergoing the fruits. So that is how it is. It is a very big topic, but the... So Prarabdha Karma, we, uh, we will undergo it. It cannot be even by... Uh, uh, Astakshriya or this thing, you will have to clear it that. Is, and it, is, it is mentioned like this that the Prarabdha Karmas means the Karmas that have already started giving fruit in your present life. They cannot be done away with. They have to be done away with or the, uh, overcome by means of experiencing the fruits, whether it is happiness or misery. But the <coughs> Sanchita Karma and Agami Karma will be destroyed. Thank you. Swami, just wanted to ask a question with respect to your statement on um, 
bhakti as uh, described as by Sri Vaishnava was to be continuous dhyanam um, of the Lord without any break. Um, you said no, that I don't think, I other... don't think it is. Because even Ramananda Acharya says, Taila Dharavati Avichinna Smriti Santati Hi Dhyanam. <clears throat> so even Ramananda Acharya says, it is, Dhyana is uh, continuous, unimpeded concentration on the Supreme Lord. So I don't think it is uh, even as wrong interpretation by Sri Vaishnava. If you have any instance, you please tell me. No, but that's not saying that. Um... Others who are practicing, they practice bhakti yoga, they will say that this is not like the, the correct interpretation. If one simply does Navada bhakti, like for instance, coming from a ESCON background, Navada bhakti, you can just do any one of these processes, no, no, all no, no, these no, processes, no, and no, you cannot no, attain no, perfections. No, I understand Shavanam Kirtanam, Vishnu, Hosmanam, Parasevanam, Arjanam, Vasim, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam, etc. The consummation of bhakti is dhyana. Right. When bhakti becomes consummated, it results in dhyana, which is the aim of bhakti yoga, which will lead to Bhagavad Sakshanka. <clears throat> so these are all angas of bhakti. So it's not like uh, dhyana is wrong interpretation. So it might be shavanam, kirtanam, that is, you listen to the pastimes, then you no Namas and Kirtana, all these are the Angas of Bhakti Yoga. When it is consummated, it will result in Kya. Okay, so in other words, once you have um, gotten the, the Palam, you have come, or, or the Siddha of that, one of these Angas, then one must attain continuous Jnana. It results in Jnana. You, you cannot say uh, you have to do Jnana. When it, consume, it consumates, then it will result in jhana. Yes. Okay. So uh, I will I will give an example. So in the beginning, uh, actually, when you listen to music or something, you feel elated and all those things. But as it as you develop more and more and more, ultimately you just want to close your eyes and enjoy. That is from a very mundane example I am giving. So mm -hmm. ultimately what happens, everything culminates here. <clears throat> so physical activity will reduce and it results in total spiritual activity which is based on the heart, based in the heart. That is why yogi hridhyana mm -hmm. So Ultimately mm -hmm. what happens, you have the sakshatkara of the Lord in your hridhyana. <clears throat> so that is what happens. Physical activity reduces. But in the beginning, physical activity is required because concentration is not possible easily. So then you do all these things. Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Hosmaranam, Parasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, etc. And Sakyam, then Atmani Vedana. What is Atmani Vedana? You give yourself that was the next question. Which is nothing but Jnana in a way. Yeah. So, Would you... Jnana is totally not against, but it is consummation of Bhakti Yoga. Would you say that this Atmani Vedanam is also considered like Prapati, or Prapati is different yes. from this that Atmani is why, Vedanam? That is, why, that is why there cannot be Bhakti without Prapati, and without Prapati there cannot be Bhakti. They are two intertwined with each other. That is what Ramananda Acharya says. Mm -hmm. Can we conclude? Any? Okay. Thank you. I hope uh, your question is answered. More or less. I think that um, as we go along, it will become more and more clear. But thank yeah. you. Yeah. Anyway, if you have further questions, you can have in the next session. Achet drama, jet yesha, tutura, tutura, kshari, kamastham, prapadyante, jantavo, antamadusha, Nyam bhoja vikasai papadhan takshayaita Shimana irabhud bhubo rabam jitiva kraham Nikrita virinta virinam kushay hutayaha Raman japadam bhoja samashena shadimaha. Thank you very much, Swami.